there we go. I have the feeling that the now came through as I counted the assembled throng in. Hello, good evening to you. It is Wednesday night. It is, in actual fact, the 23rd of October, the day after the 22nd of October. I was really, really busy all day yesterday and didn't realise that Apple was making the announcements that I'd been expecting them to make, which is why I didn't get to bed till half past three this morning because I spent some time doing what Captain Sav had been doing earlier in the day, sitting going, I want one, and I want another, and I want that one, and I want that one, and I want that one. That turned out to be a really expensive couple of hours. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Yes. Shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely shocking. But, you know, that's that's what occurs. So, yes. So it was a very, very busy day. I was that busy. I didn't have time to realise. And then when I found out what they've got, my Christmas list is that long. Let's put it like this. Leanna Lawless won't be buying me anything off it. <laughs> that simple. <laughs> um, I should probably... I'll, do I, I, I can't remember. Do I do the introductions first? I do, don't I? I do the you introductions do, yeah. first. Tonight on the show, you will note that I have both effervescent loveliness and machismo. I have both. Not in the one person, though. In two persons. Over on the far side of the room, there, diddly diddly, is the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe, that is the one and only Sav. Say good evening, Sav. Good evening. How are you diddling? All right. I'm great. I've got my hat. I've got my e-cig. I'm all good. How's yourself? I'm, I'm not so bad. Have you been raking down the back of the set, eh, trying to get the money together to go to I the Apple have. store? So far, I've got 17 pence and a euro. Oh, well, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. 17 pence and a euro has got to be a Mac Pro easily. Yeah, definitely. Yes, indeed. And in the middle monitor tonight, um, an old friend of the show, actually, he's, he's done it once or twice before, haven't you, Mark? It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's Mark Shaw, as ever was. Mark Shaw, yeah. as ever was. Not in chat tonight, are you? Or are you? I can see it, but I'm not typing. <laughs> Fair enough. How are you diddling? How's, what's the weather yeah. doing down where you are? It's been lovely, actually. Beautiful autumn's day. Sun shining, nice cool breeze. It's nice, very nice. No rain. Hopefully no rain tomorrow as well when I go to work. Not you as well. I mean, we, yeah, got, we, it, we got it off Lorian last week. She said it'd be glorious down there. Piddled it down with us all day. It's been piddling down. All... I'm going off bringing these people in from down south. They're getting <laughs> lovely weather and we're just getting whittled on. It's ridiculous. It's not right, is it, Sav? No, it's not. It's not. It's far from it. I'll tell you what. In order to prevent you and I dying of terminal envy, how's about we uh, play the titles and go into the show? Sounds like a plan. I think we'll do exactly that. Here we go. Welcome to VT Talk. And there you go, that's the titles. This is VT Talk with Sav, myself and Mark Short tonight. It's been, I think I have to say, a week of, of, of quite strangeness really, hasn't it, Mark? Um, beginning on, on Monday with that chat. You were there, weren't you? I was, yes. It was a, how can we say, it was a, it was a PR stunt for Linda McCavan, basically, wasn't it? It was just unbelievable setup, to be honest, as it's been proven now. Well, yes, yes. I mean, I, 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 uh, I took the liberty of, of videoing it. I did a screen capture via the technology that we use here and videoed the whole damn thing so that if anything was said later or if it got removed, I would have it. It's not massively readable, but you can certainly see the photos that got pop popped up and stuff like that. And perhaps, I don't know, people may not be aware, if you're not on Twitter or you're not around the forums, you may not be aware that Linda played... A bit of a trick. Do you do you want to take the story up, Mark, while I put the picture up and tell people what happened? 
Yeah, sure. Well, basically, it was uh, invited, you know, chat for everybody on Facebook to come along and pose questions to Miss McCavan regarding the TPD. Uh, and, you know, quite a few vapors and genuine constituents turned up and we was posting questions and most of them seemed to be getting ignored and a few questions popped up which were quite tame and they got quite lengthy answers and it turns out that <laughs> one of the people there sitting there pointing at the screen was posting one of the questions it seems um, <laughs> allegedly can we say allegedly or do we know for certain I, I, th I think at the moment we need to say allegedly because i do know one or two journalists are checking this out at the moment and it's not absolutely confirmed however if I read out the question that's on screen here, for those that can't see the, the smallness of the writing, it says, Hello, Mrs. McCavan. Do you think that the e-cigarette market could become more important than the classic cigarettes in the future? Shouldn't e-cigarettes be regulated as medicine to ensure their safety and prevent young people to buy them? Thanks. And this is Laura Ruiu. Linda McCavan said... It is true that the numbers of e-cigs users are rising. It is certainly better to use an e-cig than to smoke, and we need to make sure that e-cigs are safe and work effectively. Everyone agrees with that. Some MEPs are concerned that if e-cigs are regulated as medicines, they might be less available than normal cigarettes, as some countries have laws which mean all medicines are only sold in pharmacies. That isn't the case in my country, and each government makes that decision. MEPs across the board are concerned that e-cigs should not be a first step towards smoking for young people, which why MEPs voted for age limits. That's what she said. And that, I mean, that doesn't sound like a set-up answer at all, does it? Not at all. <laughs> no. But yeah, if you, if you look at that young lady there, in that picture that's right in the middle of the screen now, uh, you can tell that the, the, uh, the, the person on the right is Linda McCavan. And if you look at that young lady that's pointing with her little pinky finger at the screen and then look at that picture there, are they the same people, do you think? They look very similar to me. The nose shape hmm. appears to be right. The eye shape appears to be right. The eye colour appears to be right. The hair colour appears to be right. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's eminently possible that that indeed was... Ms. Uh, Guigno, and in fact, um, there's a whole host of stuff here, if I switch yeah. back to it, that it has been looked at. And in the comments, apparently, there were other names from the chat. Yes. Evita Naumova, who works at Network EU Paul, Martina Klugova, that works for EU Paul, and Celine Bra, an EU Parliament Information Officer. And there might even be more to come. All very interesting. So let's. I just want to make an assumption here that there wasn't actually anybody set up. There were no stooges, no plants. And if even if that's the case, what did you make of the chat, Mark? It was just ridiculous. There was no no real concerns were addressed, you know. Linda staunchly came out. Someone mentioned her about being pharma, and she staunchly came out and said, I'm not a mouthpiece for pharmaceuticals. And that was about the only gritty thing that actually came out of it, anything of any substance that came out of it, because she completely ignored us. She completely ignored any, you know, think about anything about Amendment 170. Uh, she actually went on about one thing regarding uh, the, the Europe falls behind the rest of the world in smoking prevalence and illnesses and stuff like that. And I tried to make the point to her that, hold on, we have the absolutely ideal model when it comes to smoking prevalence and Stuff like in Sweden. So, you know, do you not think, my, my question to her was, do you not think that we're basing policy on the pressure of NGOs rather than the facts using the Sweden model? And again, totally ignored. She didn't want to know about anything, you know, regarding any of that. It's just, I, I don't even know if she got to see our questions, Dave, to be honest. Well, I was, I was, I must admit, I was, I was looking at the, um, the whole screen and, and those screenshots that came up and there was definitely more on there than what we saw in the answer bits. So it wasn't just the answer chat that she was looking at. She, so she must have been seeing all the questions coming through. Um, at least this time we weren't blocked, it has yeah. to be said. That could be because we mentioned that we were last time and provided proof. But Sav, I see that you uh, are nodding and you have sage words, no doubt. Chat have got an awful lot to say on this. Um, 
Formiga has said there should be political consequences for such an anti-democratic piece of propaganda. Mr. Desi Vapor says Linda McCavan did an no-no. Fuzzy Ann said that was disgraceful. Formiga has said, if proven, Linda McCavan should be sacked, not because of her opinion, but simply because of this deceptive propaganda. Scree has said, it's a lonely life opposing e Damn right it should be. Mm-hmm. FMRL said, worrying bit for me was that she was still in favour of medregs, even though she's supposed to be presenting 170. Mm-hmm. Formigo has said, well, if it looks like a Laura and it's called a Laura, then it's probably a Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze has said, about 100 questions about Snus and Sweden were asked and totally ignored. And Lamental has said, at least we can be better prepared if she does another Q&A session. How how are we going to be better prepared? I'd love if it would. Uh... Yeah. Well, this is something me and Kat were talking about okay. um, as it was going on. That we now know the way that she works. We need, and we're seeing this towards the end of the chat. That um, everyone kept asking over and over and over again the same question: What about one seventy? What about one seventy? If we go in there, knowing exactly what we're going to say, we've got the question, the question we want answered. How can she ignore it? Oh, right. So what you're saying is we just keep on banging it and banging it and banging it from different people until it gets yeah. answered. Yeah. And obviously do all of the, the, the screen captures all the way through so the proof mm-hmm. is there. Yeah. I think that's a damn good idea. If there is another one, then we should do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I would agree uh, a great deal with what chat have been saying, certainly in terms of action that we should probably be taking about all of this. And I think... As constituents um, and people that are directly affected, there is action that we need to be taking on this. There's already been quite a Twitter storm about it. It wouldn't upset me if there was another bigger one, in all honesty. Not at all. Um, but yes, I think we've, we've tried to invoke the EU ombudsman, but I'm thinking that we might need something a little more concrete than just a tweet. Uh, and it may require a few emails to the EU Ombudsman, whose email just happens to be on the Twitter homepage for it, I think, and it's available on the EU Parliament website anyway. Might be a damn good idea if people who were actually at the chat um, got hold of the email address and penned an email uh, to ask that this be looked at. Now, I've spoken with one or two people who spend a lot of time across there. I'm not saying MEPs, but they were MEPs, who said that the MEPs who do these chats do them off their own bat and how they conduct them is entirely up to them. It's not um, the done thing. They don't think to have plants and what have you in there. Um, but yes, it does seem to be... In terms of lowness, I would put it just two millimetres lower than a spot on the nipple on a snake's belly when it's crawling through the underground underwater. That's how low I would put it. I don't know whether anybody would agree with that, but I think it's a, it's, it, it's a dog's trick, quite honestly. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't expect a dog to do anything like that. Mark, anything to add to that? Well, yeah, what you've just said there. See, my, my impression of McAvan all along, and this is my opinion, this isn't the VTT, is she's quite a deceitful person. And I think she's tried to deceive us in many ways, you know, and, and I... I think that if this is brought to light, then this just proves, you know, how low that she will actually sink to get her own way. Uh, and, it, you know, I, I received the email from Martin Callahan today, and he's basically saying that Council and some members of the Commission still want med regs, basically. He was saying that to me. So, yeah, it, it, I, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, and I'd be surprised if other politicians didn't actually set out things like this themselves in... You know, loaded questions, basically, questions that are pre-planned. It, it just doesn't surprise me at all with Linda. It really doesn't. I've not trusted her from day one. And as I say, that's my opinion. I, I just find her. I said it on here before I wouldn't trust her. She told me Christmas Day was on the 25th of December. Is it? <laughs> but no, it's, it's, she's just, she just seems to be that sort of person who would do anything to get the job she's been given done. Yes, I mean, um, we'll cover, we'll go through what's actually happening in terms of uh, the trialogue a little bit later on in the show. But I I did want to bring that uh, particular piece to everybody's attention because I think it's quite important that people are aware 
of just what lengths these people will stoop to in order to uh, stifle what we what we want to happen and what we're trying to do um, and, and it's coming from all sorts of different areas really um, I'm just checking out again let's leave, leave Linda McCavan to one side for the minute because I think she's had enough publicity tonight and I have the feeling that there'll be quite a Twitter storm heading her way. Keep it polite, be assertive rather than aggressive and it's something that I really should mention and it'll be mentioned again next week with a very special guest that we'll have from half past nine next week. Um, she can't make it any earlier, Rebecca can't because she's going to a, ro a, a running club but Rebecca Taylor will be with us next week and she's going to give us some advice on how best to interact with politicians uh, which I think will be very good because she's been extremely supportive so that's next Wednesday night and VT talk from 9.30 um, we'll be joined by Rebecca Taylor MEP um, but, so let's leave Europe to one side and look at the UK um, and just very quickly before we hurtle into adverts and stuff like that there are now two definite sides to the argument um, let me bring up the positive fi side, fi side first. This is the Institute for Government. Have you seen this uh, piece, Mark? I haven't, no. This is from Jill Rutter. Now, the Institute for Government is exactly what it says it is. Um, and it's on about better policy making. And the shock of the new, how government copes with innovation. If you haven't read this, you need to go and see this. It's absolutely glorious. It says, it's very unusual to read a leader in the Daily Telegraph lauding MEPs for stopping a policy endorsed by the UK government. Yet this is what the newspaper did recently, hailing the revolt by Conservative and Lib Dem MEPs, which threw a spanner in the works of an attempt by the Council and Commission to regulate e-cigarettes as medicines. I wish I was as clever at writing as this. This sounds a pretty obscure subject, and on the face of it, the government's policy sounds harmless enough. After all... Cigarettes are very bad for you, and having let the smoking genie out of the bag, surely governments are right to be cautious about something that sounds very like them. But this is where the story gets interesting. Now, I'm just going to go and, and scroll down a lot and said, and then here we, here we go. Then along came the EU with a proposal for light touch medicines regulation. But that is, sensibly enough, an oxymoron. Medicines regulation is very heavy duty indeed, and only big existing incumbents can possibly hope to comply. The small startups who are driving innovation would be driven instead out of business, but the impact on them was not considered. One group was completely ignored in the whole, in the whole process. The estimated 1 million plus former smokers who have switched wholly or partly to using e-cigarettes and they are very passionate about the issue too bloody right we are yeah. there were a new interest group group in town when so-called vapors discovered that their lifeline was about to be cut off in the name of health they took to social media to campaign against the changes the entrenched health lobby was on the other side but there was no argument on health impacts everybody agrees that the risks from e-cigarettes are a tiny fraction of those from the conventional product instead they used their medical expertise and authority to opine on regulatory impacts and market consequences, issues not usually covered in medical training. So the forces of conservatism, the government, the EU Commission and Council and the health lobby locked themselves into protecting a status quo which privileges the most dangerous products, cigarettes, against potential competitors. The European Parliament proved its worth by forcing a rethink. There is now a new public health minister and this will be near the top of her entry. But government not only needs to take the chance to have another look at its stance towards e-cigarettes, but to look at how it copes with innovations. Open policy making could be the key. Being open about how to frame an issue rather than box it from the start in a way that almost predetermines the outcome. Involving innovators and not just incumbents. Consulting self-identified potential beneficiaries as well as self-appointed experts and giving as much weight to potential dynamic benefits as to possibly hypothetical risks. The alternative is to stick not just with closed but closed mind policy making. That is proper 
stuff. And uh, that is coming from the Institute for Government. Mark, what do you make of that? All I can say is Ms. Miss or Mrs. Ra, I want to kiss you. That is unbelievable. Really, that is, uh, as well, someone in authority, or you know, she is, who's actually mentioned us mm. for once, who's actually said you haven't engaged with us and actually said what the, you know, what the health lobby is and stuff like that are actually doing outside their remit. They can't argue with us on health, and she's actually pointed that out. She can, they can't argue with us on health consequences, so they're, they're going out on stuff that's outside their remit. It's basically, yeah, unbelievable, Dave. I, I really wish I'd have read that. I really do, because that is brilliant. I'll be going there and commenting on there, for uh, sure. The, the, uh, how much influence do these people have? Um, quite a lot. It's the Institute for Government. They're uh, policy advisors to all kinds of people. Um, there's... there's the, the, the website itself has um, lots more information and, and if I just quickly scroll down you'll see the comments that are there. There are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of comments including one from Clive Bates. Um, loads of people, almost all uh, completely supportive of, of the stance. This is, this is how it this is how it ought to be. This is what open government and small government is all about. There were a couple of things that came out of that that I think we do need to major on. And one of those, what she was saying was that we need to take the same kind of stance as happened with the HIV outbreak um, in, in the late 70s. Um, well, yeah, early in the 70s, whenever it was in the 70s, I can't remember now. Um, where that particular group, the people that were most affected, uh, the gay community, in other words, came up with the slogan, nothing about us without us. And that is a slogan that we need to be using as well. Nothing about us without us. It's unfair for any legislature, whether it's European or whether it's a single state, whether it's in the USA, it doesn't matter where it is in the world. It is unfair and probably against all of the constitutions of any place you can think of, to legislate about a particular group of people without their full involvement. So nothing about us without us needs to be one of our war cries and watchwords. I and think that's about the best one we've had today. Say again? I said I like that slogan. I think that's one of the best ones we've had today. It, it's, uh, it, it's something that, that, that's concerned me from the start. And I've, there are a number of different bits and bobs that I've been thinking about. Um, we've got the vape as our voters. That we really, really do need to let our politicians know that we actually do vote and there's lots of us and there's going to be more of us by the time the next general election comes around and certainly by the time the uh, EU um, elections come round, the, the MEPs elections. And I know where I'll be casting my vote. I can tell you now, for a certain fact, it won't be for Labour. Um, we've got, um, what is it, proportional representation so I'll be voting both Conservative and Lib Dem, and I'll be crossing everybody else out, sod them. Um, Sav, I want to bring you in before we go to the adverts, and I know I'm going to be late with the adverts, but I'm sorry. Well, Chas, um, they've found, I'll, I'll read you what they said. Solo Soul said regarding that letter, a great piece. Um, Lamentel said, superb. Liam D. Vapor said, the writer of this gets it. And Fomega was just said, it concerns us, it concerns our family, it concerns our children, and it concerns all current smokers. They deserve a way out. Well, exactly right. I mean, it is. It, it is absolutely about us. It is all about us and our families and everybody else's families it's about it's about the proletariat if you like we're gonna have a look at how some of the other side are going and then some of how our side are going as well uh, when we get back after the break it's it's i've read myself to death my eyes are going square with spending as much time in front of the computers over the last couple of days catching up on everything that's been going on i think it's safe to say e-cigs are now mainstream we'll be back in two ticks.
Drive Weber and I Weber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room just trying to sort out one or two little technical niggles that were going on there. Um, bandwidth, it's always an issue uh, after nine o'clock on a Wednesday and Thursday night and I have no idea why. There can't be that many people watching the show. There's not football on, is there? <laughs> not that I know of. No, no. While, while we were out in the adverts, Mark was saying he'd been uh, corresponding with Martin Callanan, who happens to be one of my local MEPs. And uh, I had a good reply back from him that actually is a bit of a call to action. What was it he said again, Mark? He was basically saying that uh, some of the commission and council still want med regs. And he basically said we need to keep the pressure on on the own front now, speaking, you know, contacting MPs. And he also said con contact the Department of Health. He said, you know, and, and put forward your personal stories. Yes, indeed. Um, again. Basically, email from him, quite a detailed email. And as I say, he, he did say that there are elements still out there that are still pushing for the med regs, as we see in the chat the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, and that, that, that's the best way forward is, is to work on your MPs and, and contact the Department of Health directly. Yes, indeed. And um, just so everybody's aware, Jane Ellison is the new uh, Junior Minister for Health. Uh, under whose portfolio the whole e-cigs thing, the, the Tobacco Products Directive, falls. Um, she has an email, and again, you can use it. She has a Twitter account as well, although I haven't seen her use it yet. Have you, Sav? No. No, I haven't. Um, so, I've been and had a look at her timeline, and she tweets once every two or three days, and it's not necessarily the kind of stuff that, that would interest the likes of you and me, but uh, nonetheless... Uh, she does have a timeline, and if that's full when she logs on, that's probably no bad thing. Um, certainly, as uh, Jill Rutter has said, the whole notion of the Tobacco Products Directive will be right at the top of her in-basket. So now is the time. And if you're not sure about contacting a minister directly, um, and the likelihood is that an underling would uh, would deal with it, well, whatever you set. Um, my teeth are going again, Sav. <laughs> Can you get your mum to knit a pair of mittens for me teeth? No problem. Right, I'll try that one again. Possibly the easiest way to get to the Junior Minister for Health, Jane Ellison, is via your own MP. Now, those of you that are on Twitter and follow me might have seen I came up with a little bit of an idea yesterday about this, and I'm going completely off my running order here. It seems to me that if we go one at a time to see MPs, A, we're going to take up a lot of their time, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if we go as groups, then they may see that there's kind of force of numbers there. So it occurred to me that if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be, then if you tweet with the hashtag the first three or four of your postcode, and obviously you know where you live, and people in your postcode will know if it's, if I don't know, YT56 or whether it's DH4. For me, it will be DH4. After that, it gets too narrow uh, because 4UT is this street, 5UT is only three doors down and that kind of thing. It's a little bit too narrow. So I need people in my DH4 postcode. So if I can find them and then we can get together, we can make an appointment to go and see our MP Bridget Philipson, en masse. It might only be five or six, or it could be 50 or 60. Just depends on how many vapors there are in your area. But if you tweet with hash, first three or four of your postcode, then anybody in your area can search for that hashtag, hashtag whatever it happens to be, in my case, DH4. And you can get yourselves together and make an appointment to go and see your MP. Then all of your viewpoints, all of your personal stories are there. And you can 
pass them across. Now, it's just something I came up with. I don't know how people will receive that, but I'd, I'd love your opinion, Mark. I think it was a good idea. I've put in my ash, uh, my postcode, but yesterday, as soon as you put it up, I thought no doubt. Because as you say, it also shows them that there's a sense of community there, mm -hmm. and that we're not mm -hmm. all astroturfers, as we get, as we get, to, as we get called so often. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. I've not actually, I've checked my hashtag on my tweet and I've not actually had anybody else because my one's only two letters, so it's E3, which is also uh, a gaming festival. Uh. <laughs> so so I'm getting a lot of things come back for that, a gaming festival, but it's uh, a gaming convention. But yeah, it is a great idea if anyone can get it. As you say, even if you go two at a time, it, it gives you... Yeah. more of a voice and it shows the, that, that you know that we're serious about this and that we you know that this matters to us that we're prepared to go these to these lengths you get what i mean to, to to get our point across indeed absolutely right absolutely right saf uh, is uh, is chat saying anything about any of this yeah chat are talking about it and bob the random has just said hashtag it with hashtag esig also and then we can he can tell it apart from especially in mark's case from the e3 gaming convention Oh, when you do your search, it'll show up. You'll know what to look for. Right. You see, this is this is where I'm I'm comp I'm a little bit uh, naive. So if you were to put two hashtags in, you can search on two hashtags at once. I think so. Yeah. Or at least when you search on your postcode, you'll be able to just filter it out by seeing the hashtag for the e six in the the tweet, ah, rather than having to read every one. See if if the like game and aunt happen to live next door to you. Yes, indeed. That's so. There you go. That's a good idea. We seem to be agreeing on that. It's one that we'll uh, we'll follow up. I'm going to keep on doing it. If you do, you just need to do it two, three times a day, so that the tweets are there. Because I don't know how long each of the applications will pick up and, and search back. You sounded as though you had something else to say there, Sav. There's something else that came in from um, our very own Daz, and he said it would also be a good idea if you have any bricks and mortar stores in your area to take a letter along and explain to them what is happening. Because they're facing people all day, every day, and some of them have absolutely no clue what is going on out there. Do you know, that's 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 actually very, very true. Um, we've, we've seen from our own experience, Sav and I, just locally, that some of the bricks and mortars and, and barras in the malls are well clued up and others haven't got a clue, don't <laughs> even know that the tobacco products directives going through, have no idea about any threat, which is is kind of worrying. In fact, I'm going to go to Tuffers. <laughs> I'm go, I'm, I've, I wasn't going to go here yet, but I'm going to go to Tuffers. And it, it is a little bit Twitter centric. Um, those of you that know Phil Tufnell, if you follow Phil Tufnell, you'll have seen he's been banging on about Stoptober and that he's been supported by an outfit called Quitsig, K-W-I-T-C-I-G. And up until two or three days ago, I'd done web searches and couldn't find anything about any Quitsig anywhere. But a couple of days back, he tweeted that the website was now available and apologised for his face being on there. Here's the website. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, actually, before I do that. There we go. Here's the website. Have a look at this. Now, anybody watching this show will know that med claims are not something that we should be making in any way, shape or form. But have a look at that. No tar, no flame, no odour, no ash. Quitsig tobacco replacement therapy. And you'll see around here, where my cursor's wandering round, that little green cross that says pharmacy. Lovely. It's clinically tested. Who the hell buy? Four steps to help you quit. Step one, 24 milligram. Step two, 18. Step three, eight. Step four, zero milligram. Phil Tufnell is bowled over in October by Quitsig. Phil is trying Quitsig as tobacco replacement therapy in his attempt to give up smoking. I have already tweeted Mr. Phil Tufnell to tell him he's involved with something which currently, even under current MHRA regulations, is illegal because they are claiming us to be a medicines, but I cannot find any reference to a medicines authorization, marketing authorization, or anything remotely resembling one on that website. Now, Mark, you hadn't seen that prior to tonight, had you? Well, what do you, what do you make of that? It's Martin McKee's wet dream, isn't it? Let's be honest. It is, 
he's going to be sitting there rubbing his hands together. Him and Chapman are probably having a dance around the Maypole right now. It, it's unbelievable. I can't believe that's, that, that a company, you know, they've obviously got a bit of money behind them to be getting, well, I don't know. I don't know how much it is to get Phil Tufnell to endorse your product these days, but that's unreal. I, I, I was stunned when you showed me that to, tonight just before we came on air. I could not believe what I was seeing. I really couldn't. That, that, that is, as you say, that is an out and out medicinal claim. Even the way it's set up, it, it just looks like they're trying to go for the medicines room. And as you said, I, I've been told directly myself by trading standards that any med claims are totally illegal. They are, even at this moment. So you're not allowed to make health claims, which I don't, but you get what I mean? That's what they were saying to me. Well, yes, okay. exactly right. I mean, you know, we've known this for long enough that that kind of thing is dangerous ground to tread on. And I have the feeling, looking across at Sav and seeing that, that little look at our face that I know so well. Chat's had something to say, haven't they? Oh, Chat are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I will pick out the ones that I can read. Um, oh, go on. Rago says, be, be a devil and read, my... out, be a devil and read <laughs> out some of the ones you can't. Sorry, we're adults. We're all over 18. <laughs> Well, media use the one that's on my screen at the minute. Says hopefully they get their asses kicked. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Formigo says makes my blood boil. Moonlit says tobacco replacement therapy. Holy Christ! And then followed that with this can't possibly end well. Midge Dog says a face palm, not good. Mister Desi Vapor just said sigh. Liam D Vapor said screwing us over for sure that site and Lazy Vapor has said quit sick were around twelve months ago in the market selling water. It was on Watchdog on BBC. Selling water? Hmm. Oh I'll have to look that up somehow. I don't know how. He's mind you, you know, quit sick aren't alone in being silly. Um I've got another one here which I'll I'll go to. Um there you go. Have a look at that. This came to me from Nathan last night at stupid o'clock, uh, probably about two o'clock in the morning. Um, if you can read that, people in chat, this is on eBay, where e cigs are banned, right? And the fact that this nicotine solution being sold at all is quite um, strange. But the fact that he's selling 100 milligram per milliliter, look at the state of that, right? That is craziness. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna leave it so you can see it. I'm certainly not gonna link to it. Hundred milligram per milliliter USP nicotine solution strength diluted in a 99.98% USP grade carrier based propylene glycol. Warning: This product is for DIY use only. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Sav, I know you do some more mixing yourself. Your take? It's ridiculous. It's just. Stupid! It oh god! It's just beyond words. It's just so stupid. These people! Oh, you know, I mean, I keep I keep on looking at what's going on, and and it would seem to me that there are folks out there haven't got a clue about the mess that they're making for everybody else. These people are just trying to make a quick book. Um, I know that the kind of folks that, that you know, the dragons would, would say, well, you know, brilliant, you're going to make good margins and you've got a, a product that nobody else has got. Well, there's nobody else in the UK has got 100 milligram because it's bloody well illegal. Anything yeah. higher than 75 is illegal. But again, Mark, what, what do you make of that? As you just said there, that's astounding because th these people, as you said, they're trying to make some money. Fair enough. Everybody wants to make it. But, but there's... The responsibility that kind of goes with, with with selling this stuff, there really is, a, and it, it, they they really don't have a clue how many people how many people's lives that this could end up affecting because it's just giving pure ammo to the ants. It really is, and people to say you know like that, that does sound so strange that someone's selling hundred milligram, which as you say is illegal. You've got to have a poisoner's license for anything over seventy five milligram in the UK. So for him to be actually selling that, is is it an English based? Is it an English address or? Um, it's in Stockport. Right, so they're, they're, they're down as an English UK vendor. It's not coming from overseas. Cause, so that is just unreal. I get people coming to the store, Dave, other vendors, 
and some of them are aware of what's going on in the EU and I get others, as you said there, who are totally green behind the gills and have no idea that what's going on with the EU. They have, uh, well, with, with everything, even on the own front now, they have no idea at all that, that this is seriously under threat, you know? Know that their livelihood is seriously under threat. Well, well ab absolutely. I mean, and, and it's not just it's not just vendor livelihoods that are under threat. I mean, it, it's our lives as yeah, well. No, if, exactly, yeah. if, if if idiots like this keep on doing pulling stunts like the Quitzig stunt and the hundred milligram stuff, um, I mean, the, the effect that that can have is ridiculous. Sav, I have the feeling that Chat might have had something to say. <laughs> yes, they have. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about uh, countries where that was is actually legal to sell but obviously in the UK it is not um, very boring has said so is that listed in the new assassin section on eBay <laughs> moonlit and this is my favourite comment in the night so far has said I think my brain just packed a bag and left it couldn't stand the crazy funny trickster says these people give proper vendors a bad name they will only see this crap and Vanessa has said is this a setup deliberately making us look irresponsible you have to wonder whether that's the case, and I don't. Th I, to be honest, I don't think it is a setup to make anybody look irresponsible. I think it's somebody trying to cash in on what they see as being. It is a unique selling point because there's nobody else in the UK stupid enough to try and sell anything over seventy-five. In fact, all of the vendors that I am aware of stop at seventy-two, so that if their juice is is tested it's most unlikely that they're going to go over the 75. Because if, if it came in at 75.5, they could get their backsides kicked for quality control. Um, my thinking is that, one, eBay needs to find out about this quick smart, but that would be the second call after I'd been on to trading standards. And that might just happen. If anybody's... Um, what, what, sorry, Mark, go on. But that's what I was going to say. I think we all hold a responsibility in this as vapors. We sh we should be flagging these things ourselves and keeping a record of the fact that you flagged them, so they can't ever come up and say, "Oh, oh look, you know these irresponsible." You can say, "Well, hang on a minute. These were actually flagged to you by people who are using e-cigarettes, who are selling e-cigarettes and stuff like that." We've got to bear some of the responsibility for this and put shot these charlatans. Basically, we have to because it, it's not helping us at all. No, it's not. You saw. You saw. Um, can I just jump in here? Yep. Our little detective Mark has just sent me a link to a website where they're also selling a hundred percent, hundred milligram. Really? So they're not just selling on eBay. They're also there's also a website that they're selling from. For the, the same people. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I should I should probably mention that uh, following on the conversation from last night, I think Nathan, um, who's in chat at the minute. As uh, he's got this in hand and he's he's going down the right route to make sure that it it comes from us, so that we are shown to be responsible, um, and you know we, we'll we've got to get this this kind of thing stopped. It's got to stop, otherwise everything that we've been telling MEPs, MPs, and anybody else that cares to listen is shown to be false. It it, it worries the hell out of me. It really yeah. really does. Um, we need to take a quick ad break, and when we come back. There's more. There's yet more. There's been so much happening this week. We might not get through it all, but we'll try. We'll be back in two minutes. Do not go anywhere unless you can shake the drops off inside one minute, 34 seconds.
and we are live back i'm sorry that i was looking across there but that's where my little figures are to tell me how long it is before we go live again um before we move on from that can i just jump in there's a lot of chat um about this nick and just need to make it clear that the 100 mils is 10 percent in the uk 7.5 percent is what's legal so it's not 100 percent it is 10 percent of the solution but 7.5 is what is legal yes Right. Yes, thank, thank you for that, Sav. Thank you for that, yes. Let, let's be under no misapprehension. It is 10%, but 7.5% is the legal limit. And we were just having a conversation about what we need to do about this. And we just need to get it stopped. I don't know whether we do it quietly or we make a noise about it. There are pluses and minuses to either side. Because at the moment, it does seem that on the one side, we've got the likes of Jill Rutter and another piece, which I'll share with you shortly. On the other side, we've got idiot bloody councils let's go to the web and uh, this is from scunthorpe independent news and i've always whenever i see that name i always say if typhoon put the tea in britain finish the rest off yourself um council bureaucrats to ban e-cigarettes in order to have a clear policy towards smoking this was yesterday in a report released this afternoon in Scunthorpe, bureaucrats at North Lincolnshire Council have announced plans to ban e-cigarettes from its buildings and vehicles, treating them the same as cigarettes. The report claims that if e-cigarettes are not banned, then the council's position will remain unclear, and that further amendments to the proposal would result in consultation being needed, which would delay the implementation. Excuse me, I'm going to come live. It might delay an implementation, but consultation is exactly what's needed. Nothing about us, without us. I'll carry on. The report does not make it clear as to why there is such a perceived necessity to do this with haste or why consultation would indeed be a bad thing, as e-cigarettes have been on the market for around two years now. Mm, and the rest. <laughs> While the council are clearly striving to have a clear policy... Even their policy wording on e-cigarettes does seem somewhat contradictory. The revised policy will read, In addition to this, the council does not permit the use of electronic cigarettes, e -cigarettes on council premises or in council vehicles. E-cigarettes are battery-powered products which release a visible vapour that contains liquid nicotine which is inhaled by the user. E-cigarettes fall outside the scope of the smoke-free legislation, but some models can, particularly from a distance, look like real cigarettes making this policy difficult to enforce. This may also create an impression for visitors, customers or other employees that it is acceptable to smoke. What is unclear is whether there is any actual or perceived health risk to others for e-cigarettes, making this exercise appear to be one in which policy is being implemented for policy's sake as opposed to protecting the workers and visitors to council buildings. And then it says, <laughs> tell us your thoughts in our poll. Should e-cigarettes be banned from council premises? I'm just going to vote no. And vote. And that will tell us that 92.06%, you can see it there, look, of people do not believe that e-cigarettes should be banned from council premises. Which is interesting. I'd love to see that get up to closer to 100%. If you follow me, Drift. Found it on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, you should be. Sav, I dare bet chat's had something to say about that as well. Yes, chat have. Moonlit says, oh God, more lunacy. <laughs> Formigo says, and there goes my blood again. Blaze has said, smoke free or the like are behind all these bans. You mark my words. Whip it up 69 says, if you think the Scunthorpe one is bad, you, su you should see the Salford one. Oh, that's where we're going next. <laughs> <laughs> and Formigo has said, they fall outside the smoke-free policy because it's not smoke. <laughs> well, quite exactly. That's exactly the point. And, and they don't, I mean, all of this is renormalisation. This is the BMA and its execrable opinions just getting into places where it shouldn't. I mean, BMA in Scotland, for instance, had a whole host of its people writing to various different local councils suggesting that they implement exactly this kind of, in inverted commas, policy, which strikes me as being counterproductive um, and stupid. In fact, bloody stupid, with a capital B and a capital S. 
But let's go to Salford, seeing as how it's already been mentioned. And here we have it, Town Hall ban on staff using e-cigarettes in public view. Ha <laughs> ha! Salford Council has banned staff from using the devices, which taste and feel like cigarettes without the tar, close to any of its buildings. Hang on. Close to any of its buildings. That means outside. <laughs> Let's go back. Yes. Salford Council has banned its staff from using the devices which taste and feel like cigarettes without the tar close to any of its buildings. Its new smoking policy says that e-cigarettes should be treated like conventional tobacco so that smoking isn't normalised. The policy drawn up by town hall bosses says where smoking does takes place, really, outside, the location should be out of public view wherever possible and must not be directly outside buildings constitute a risk in terms of fire, be adjacent to doors or windows where second-hand smoke could enter the building. It's not bloody smoke, it's vapour. There's no lit, there's no risk of fire. And directly outside buildings? Why not indoors? We'll carry on. A report prepared for a town hall meeting says these rules should apply also to e-cigarettes because they resemble Normal cigarettes. Excuse me. Yes. The revised smoking policy therefore treats them similarly to smoking tobacco with regards to restricting their use in the work workplace. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to read the rest. It's making me blood boil. Mark. Oh. Mark's disappeared for the time being. It looks as though the connection's gone and dropped. Sam? Uh, oh, chat. Uh, not, not happy at all. <laughs> um... John Lonsdale says they'll be banning people breathing on cold days next. Formigo has said, following his trials, and now my 36 milligram isn't enough, I need booze. <laughs> Whip it up 69 says, this is effing stupid. And Midge Dog says, a council being short-sighted and misinformed. Nah. <laughs> it's, it's right. They are. Absolutely certain. They are. Um, you'll be able to see... Um, over my shoulder, he said, pressing all of the wrong buttons in all of the wrong way, that, that Mark's not, he's, his connection's dropped, it's still there, he'll come back in at some point, I think it's trying very hard, um, and I'll, I'll have another go at getting them back in, um, but I wanted to show you something else, um, and this is entitled, The Lunatic War on E-Cigarettes, if you haven't seen this, um, Sales of electronic cigarettes have risen dramatically in recent years. I should also show you it's in the New York Post. This is a, a publication of some weight. Um, and yes, although it's uh, based in the, the US, obviously, there are some rather nice bits in this. Uh, I'll just go from this paragraph here, which says, So why the strange resistance to e-cigarettes, which contain no tobacco and generate no smoke, among people concerned about the health hazards of tobacco and smoking? Like other activists and some politicians, Azarelli claims to be worried that e-cigarettes will make the conventional variety seem glamorous again. We're very concerned that what was becoming passé, smoking, is now coming back, she says. In other words, Azarelli and her fellow activists worry that a product whose main selling point is avoiding the scary hazards and offensive stench of smoking somehow will make smoking more appealing. That fear seems implausible to say the least, and there is no evidence to support it. And if we go down further, um, they talk about uh, Michael Siegel. Uh, it says, the survey provides no evidence that such experimentation leads to smoking. This is talking about the CDC data. Um, to the contrary, as Siegel points out, nine out of 10 e e teenagers who tried e-cigarettes were already smokers meaning the trend that attorneys general consider a public health emergency may instead portend successful harm reduction. Likewise with adults, survey data indicate that e-cigarette use is overwhelmingly concentrated about current and former smokers. It's in the shift from the former category to the latter that the disease-reducing potential of e-cigarettes lies. Impending that transition by imposing arbitrary restrictions on e-cigarette advertising, sales and flavours would be a literally fatal error. And that is what you call good journalism. Welcome back, Mark. Did you catch yes, much of that? I just 
dropped for some reason. It just went all a bit, a bit skew with. It's it's the internet pixies that are playing silly buggers tonight. Um, that's that's we've just covered the piece that uh, that was in the uh, the New York Post and is repeated in a few other places. I don't know whether you've seen it or not. Have you? Yeah, yeah. I, that was the first thing I see when I logged onto the internet this morning. I've done my usual first thing in the morning electronic cigarette news search, and that was the first thing that come up. So it started the day off on a good foot. A brilliant piece. Uh, he totally says what the CDC survey was all about. It was you know they're, they're trying to say that. These will lead people into smoking when all the evidence is pointing that it leads people away from smoking, actually, uh, and that it's not attractive to non-smokers. And as you say, the New York Post does carry some clout, so hopefully we'll get the right people reading it. But what, what, one thing I wanted to say, just going back on the Salford Council, if you don't mind. Go for it. Normalisation, this normal, like, this is outright persecution. That's the only word for it. We are being totally persecuted for a behaviour that gets up some people's noses. And it's not right. This has got to stop. I'm sure that there's... I would love to see someone from Salford Council stand outside and actually smoke an e-cig and see if they actually got fired and then take that to a tribunal because I can't see in any way, shape or form in law that they would be at, that they'd have a leg to stand on. Do you know, I, I think you're probably right on that. I, I do, I think you're probably right on that because it is nothing but persecution for all of the wrong reasons. There are, well, not that there are any right reasons for persecution. It's discrimination against people doing something that's perfectly legal. And that, to me, is wrong. Um, but, of course, there's, there's plenty we can do to help about this and the idea of going down to Salford. It would be a great idea if uh, 60 or 70 vapors went and stood outside Salford Council with their e-cigs of, of the kind ranked along here, shall we say. And there's cheapens, there's cheapens as well, as well as expensive ones there as well. And just have a little demonstration, you know. Let them know that vapors are voters and nothing about us without us. Those two great points. There is something else you can do, and I want to make a plea for you to do this. If you're on Twitter, you will know uh, that the Save Six campaign has got another letter going out. Um, and I would like you, please, if you would, to go and sign it and get as many people to sign it as you can. Um, the letter will be delivered to the Parliamentary Under Secretary for Health, Jane Ellison MP, in front of the Department of Health in London in November with the UK press invited. Precise date to be confirmed. Please support it. There are several options for signing. You can download the PDF version and get as many of your friends and family to sign it as you can. Or, like we were saying earlier, um, take it down to your local bricks and mortars and leave it there to get as many signatures as possible. Um, you need, you need to, to, to sign it with your name and your postcode and then scan and send it back and all of the, the details are there. They need thousands of signatures. We need thousands of signatures this is about us nothing about us without us and for the avoidance of doubt i'm going to go down and hand the letter over i've been asked to and i've got the greatest of pleasure in doing that um this big gob on this big bloke is going to be down there making as much noise as he possibly can can you arrange to make this letter and the signatories there to the petition as you might as well call it if you want to can you make it so heavy that I need a wheelbarrow and two strong lads to help me get it there, please? Can we have as many signatures as it's humanly possible to get? Download the PDF, take it to your local bricks and mortar, take it to your market stalls, get everybody that you know and that everybody that, that you can think of to get signatures, as many as they can. I would love to go down there with hundreds of thousands, indeed millions of signatures on this thing. Please, please, please do it. Just so you know, Rebecca Taylor thinks it's a brilliant idea. And I would think she's one that would know. Sav? Right, I'm going to do something a bit strange. I normally give the last word to chat, but that last article you were talking about brought up a lot of people in chat shouting for the banning of cigarettes, and I just want to know what you guys think of that. I know we're going to run over. Apologies, Cat, my fault, but I feel this has to be addressed. I think you're right. I think it does have to be addressed. I'm going to let Mark take it first. 
banning cigarettes. What, what do you think? Well, see, I can see people's points because they are a bit of a bane, a pain in the ass to us, pardon my language, but they are. But I still think that they're an avenue that leads people on to better, bigger and better things in vaping. I think there is a place for them, unfortunately. I just wish they would try to make them look at least like a fag as possible. If they could just make them all plain black or bright pink or something like that would be nicer. But there you go. And, you know, it's already been assessed that People like Britain have no interest in making egos or anything like that. They want things that look as close to a fag as possible. So that doesn't help us either. But I do still think that they are a, a way that people get into vaping. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with all of that. And if I can put my two penneth in, um, my least favourite word is ban. I hate the whole idea of anything being banned. My take on life for the last i don't know how long has been that if people know what the risks are of anything that they're thinking about doing if they still choose to do that they should be allowed sort of do now i recognize i do recognize that what got me into vaping was a cigar lake I mean, it's a bit bigger but it was pretty close too and it was only because i mistook it for being a cigarette in the first place that I even thought about asking about it. Um, and that was purely and simply because of the smoking ban. Had one of the guys come in with, oh, I don't know. I mean, they, they weren't around at the time, but if they'd come in with a 134 or a VTR or, or, or any of the more esoteric styles of mods, given that I was in the music game, I'd have thought, oh, that's a new way to take hash. Um, I'd still have had a go. <laughs> probably more than I did with the lucky lady but I'm pretty sure I, well I'm, I'm not I know for a certain fact if I'm out and using something like this like a GG like a 134 like a VTR anything that's big um, people do ask questions about it and that's great they don't necessarily want to give it a go but if I'm talking to a smoker and I've got something I'm gonna have to almost preview tomorrow night but if I've got something like this and they realise it's not real, they'll ask for a go. They will ask for a go because it looks like a cigarette. And if it works reasonably well, the likelihood is that they'll take it up. Sav, I'm hearing you coming in. Yes, I just have to say, as a friend of mine, um, him and his wife both started on E6. And he uses the, the ones from Tesco's. And I've spoke to him loads of times. My brother spoke to him saying, well, you can get this. This is a bigger battery. It's going to last you longer. And he said, no, I like these. I'm happy with them. And I, I'm totally with you on, I hate the word ban. And if you start saying, right, well, we'll ban them ones, but them ones are okay. It's just as soon as you ban one thing, you've opened the door to ban everything as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, I would agree with you totally. I would absolutely agree with you totally. Um, that's clever. I don't know how it's done that. Oh, yeah, I do. Wrong keyboard. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you were to put a ban on cigar lakes, and if that was a legislated ban, how the hell would they word it such that it didn't also capture an ego with a white battery and, let's say, a brown um, Vision Ego or a CE4 or whatever it happened to be on the top, if the colour scheme was the same? So you can't do it by colour scheme. If you do it by the colour of the light on the end, again same sort of thing applies there are mods that have red lights on the end if you do it by the amount of vapor that it puts out th there's no way that you could sensibly do it that would not also impact on everything else by the same token i met a, i met a lass while i was on holiday who was using a cigar lake it was crap and if you're watching this i'm sorry but it was it was utter crap i had a go on it it produced nothing um it wasn't dry there was no power in the battery i mean she'd sucked the life out of it she had but i sat and watched her while i was sat by the pool this day and she took a drag on it no more than once an hour one drag once an hour that was all she needed nobody turned her hair nobody was bothered by it she wasn't upsetting anybody and she said to me that she was dead pleased she was using it because she hadn't smoked a fag in the eight months that she'd had that lookalike. They have a place. And really, we can't turn on 
other vapors just because they're using something that we ourselves might find repugnant. It's all yeah. about tolerance. It's all about inclusivity. Nothing about us without us. Sam, yeah. go on. Just totally, totally agree with that. If that's what works for some, let them do it. Don't take that away from them. Exactly. Just don't. Exactly. Mark? Yeah, exactly. You can't be just down to your own prejudice. You can't start enforcing that on others because that's exactly the situation we're in at the moment. Well, that's, that's exactly it, isn't it? That, that's exactly the situation. Here we are, uh, a band of, I would think, perfectly normal people, a pretty good cross-section of society, who have decided to use nicotine in a safer way. We've decided that we want to substitute uh, an e-cig for our smoking habit. That seems to me to be a perfectly norm normal thing to do, yet there are people out there who would look down their noses at us because of that. And I find that very, very strange. I mean, I, I really don't like strong perfumes on ladies. I just never have. Most often because they pick on a, an aroma that I find not attractive. I'm going to say it that way, just in case I get anybody's back up. But when you sat on a train or whatever and somebody comes wafting past that reeks as though they've just had a bath in, I think it's called poison. I call it poisson. Oh, me. I love that. Well, sorry. that's fine. You, you know, you, you're entitled to like it. I do, I believe love it. The thing about it, it well, you, you, you. But would, I would only ever wear it on a night out. I wouldn't wear it during the day because it's far too much for a daytime perfume. This was around about, well, I don't know what time it was when we were going to Brussels. But the woman came past and I nearly threw up. It was like, honestly, like somebody sprayed me with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I followed her back to her carriage. And then stood, as you do, in the, in the little, where the loos are. And then went and stuck me nose in. And honestly, you'd have thought she'd have gone round and anointed every bloody chair with this. It stunk to high heaven. I mean, honestly, seriously, it was worse than one of my farts. I'm, I'm going to oh, put God. it that way. It was <laughs> awful. You know, I mean, I wouldn't seek to ban it, but I would seek to educate that particular, that particular lady that what Sav said. That, you know, it's a bit much for 10 o'clock in the morning, pet. I want a hell. But that's the point, isn't it, though? You'd educate. Yes. And that's, that's where we're at. I mean, tomorrow night, I'm going to be looking at something that's going to make BAT fall out of bed, bang its head on the potty, and cry out the window. Join me tomorrow to find out what that is. Sav knows, don't you, Sav? I do. They're not going to like this at all. <laughs> no. They're not. not. And there'll be a few people that will say, what the hell are you looking at those for, Dave? But I'll tell you why tomorrow, um, for all sorts of good reasons. I just need to check. I think we've covered everything, bar one thing I did want to say. I think the tide is turning in our favour. We're seeing more and more positive journalistic efforts, more and more positive articles in the press, both in the UK and abroad. We're seeing the BBC even starting to become a bit more supportive. And we're certainly getting a lot more support from MEPs who have voted our way, speaking to their colleagues. And like I said, don't miss next week's show because Rebecca Taylor will be with us. And if I can work it, there might be another one as well. Um, just to let you know how to do what we're doing that much more effectively. And if this doesn't get rid of the astroturfing nonsense, nothing will. Um, Mark, is there anything you want to add before we call it to a close tonight? No, any any call to action? No, yeah, basically what you're just saying there, we just keep on the pressure. Just keep keep on the pressure. Not not going too overboard, but just keep doing what we're doing and because it's working. Yes, I, I would agree with that 100%. We know we've got the power. We know we've got the ability. Let's keep on keeping on people. Let's keep on talking to our politicians and making sure that they are educated. Let's make sure they know how we feel. Remember, nothing about us without us. And vapors are voters. As per usual, Sav, the last word goes to chat. Have you identified? I haven't actually, but um, I'm actually going to give the last word from me to chat. And I just want to say they have been absolutely awesome tonight. They have been really good. They are, up from me. they are the best chat on the planet. 
without a doubt. I've said it so many times, and I honestly do believe it. You, you're so supportive, and you, and you do, you bolster us all up all of the time. Thank you so much for, for being with us. The same applies to people that watch us on video on demand. We, we love that you do that, and we hope that we're being a little bit helpful in the information that we bring you and the occasional chivying up. Don't forget, go and sign the Save Sigs letter. Get it out to everybody. Get as many signatures as you want. If it's in a transit van when I take it, I'll be ever so happy. Mark, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been Thanks. a great pleasure to have you with us. Um, thank you. Sav, as per usual, a massive big thank you to you because your job is, I've tried doing what you do and I can't. It's just... You, I've got a magic hat. What can I say? Well, the magic... The, and, and, and the lady that crocheted it. Yes. That's not the correct pronunciation, is it? No. Crocheted. Crochet. I know it's crochet, but I like to say crochet. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, and to Kat and the rest of the team as well, because I know they're all in there backing her up. Um, yes, they are indeed. But thank you, thank you, thank you to um, everybody for watching. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for sharing the last hour with us. Don't forget, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. I'll see you tomorrow. VT Talk, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Good night. Where is it? I've lost it. There it is.